Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors with James Holst. Look at that. Wow, is that an incredible fish? And the rest of the IDO fishing team. We're headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. <laughs> With Cal Schweel. What a specimen. And Joel Nelson. Whoa, this is an absolute monster. <laughs> This is In-Depth Outdoors. Mr. Koontz? Yes, sir. I kind of like uh, traveling light on you know early ice, but uh, this beats walking. This beats the walking a lot. Those are nice sleds. Well, this is our home for the day. I hope you like it. I like it when you give me a call. Come out, do some ice fishing. I say, where? You go, I don't know, but you'll be the first to know when I know. <laughs> Get in the truck and let's go. <laughs> <laughs> well, as we ended our season last year, 2015, you know, the big news every week was there's no ice. Where are we gonna be next? Thankfully, here at the start of 2016 and our first shoot in the new year, that's all behind us. Uh, I think the entire Midwest now has received enough cold weather where most of the places you'd expect to have ice this time of year, you have got ice. So uh, I think we're gonna be off to a great start here in January. We're gonna see lots of new bodies of water open up as far as uh, places where we can get to now. Uh, our world was getting very small back there right before Christmas. There just wasn't a lot of places we could fish anymore. So today we drove west from the Twin Cities and we're out here near Arlington, South Dakota, an area that I've never fished before. But what brings us here is word of a really hot yellow perch bite. So Dave Koontz and I are gonna unpack a little gear Get the augers out, and punch a bunch of holes, and see if we can't get on some really good early ice perch fishing here in South Dakota at a time of year where we'd normally be midwinter. But the truth is, this is really ice. Yeah. All right, so uh, I'll get the auger unpacked. Let's punch some holes, see if we can't find some fish. Get her done. James? Yes, sir. First time out, totally unorganized. Yeah, it kind of feels that way, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Well, for me, I, I had my uh, my ground game Yep. when I was pulling out sleds. I had it figured out. And now that we've added the snowmobiles in and we're hauling more gear, everything's just <laughs> upside down. We'll get it. I have confidence. Got it. <laughs> They're digging the spoon this morning. Yeah? Yeah. I get them following, but I'm not getting a lot of commitment on that. Every fish I've had come in so far has just throttled it. And that's okay. a nice fish. I'll drive for that. Not the biggest fish uh, or perch I'll catch this winter, but definitely a nice one. All right. Probably right there in that 10, 11 inch range. This lake we're fishing today, we're right near Arlington, South Dakota, has just been on a tear for producing perch in that 10 to almost 13 inches. You're probably not gonna come out here and catch a 14 or 15 inch perch. You might, but the, that's really not what this fishery is all about right now. But it is kicking out huge numbers of these just wonderful eating size yellow perch. And they are gobbling up the spoon. There we go, got him. You know, sometimes we come out here and we have to do a bunch of changing around to kind of find the hot pattern. And uh, I'm not saying this is what I'm gonna end up fishing all day long, but I chose a spoon color this morning that I rarely fish. It's glow goldfish. And uh, it's got an orange back, and then it's got a gold front. 
and uh, for whatever reason just caught my eye this morning and it's working. It's, a, it's the smallest tumbler spoon they make. It's the 1 20th ounce. And uh, in this clear water, these fish seem to be responding really well to it. So we're just uh, loading it up with a, a year old larva on each hook there and catching some perch. And I love me a good perch bite. You marking any fish over there, Coons? Yeah, but I just can't get them to bite. What you fishing now? I put a flash champ on, yep. but I think it's the wrong color. This would definitely be a go-to color for the for the river, but maybe I gotta start thinking lake. Clear water. When was the last time you had uh, 10 foot visibility, huh? <laughs> Never? <laughs> Bifocals, maybe? Nearly 70 years ago, a simple idea was taking form in the heart of the ice belt. That idea was, if you combined a commitment to quality with a passion for the sport of ice fishing, you could build a better ice auger. From that idea, StrikeMaster was born, forever committed to innovation in the quest to build a lighter, more durable auger. StrikeMaster, powerful, durable, reliable. The WX2060 and the MX2040 from Skeeter Boats. Loaded with a long list of standard features anglers want at an unbeatable price, including a Yamaha VMAX SHO250 horsepower outboard, Yamaha T9.9 .9 kicker with remote controls, Lowrance HDS12 Gen 3 touch at the dash, and a Minn Kota 112 Ultera on the bow. The WX2060 priced at $59,995. The new MX2040 priced at $58,995. More comfort, more standard features. When you move up to a WX2060 or MX2040, you get more of everything. VMC's dominating line of panfish baits just got even better. With the introduction of new baits molded from high-density tungsten, the Miracle Metal that offers the same weight as traditional lead at half the size. The platoon of new baits include the Tungsten Fly, fast-sinking VMC Nymph and Waxtail Soft Baits pre-rigged on VMC Tungsten Jigs, and the innovative Tungsten Chandelier Jig that targets roaming panfish like a fish-seeking missile. The next time you hit the ice, tie on a tungsten, and you'll be fishing fast and taking names with VMC. From the first time you pick up a tuned up custom rod, you'll know you're holding something special. A rod not mass produced, but built one at a time by the hands of gifted craftsmen. Rods like the Precision, ice fishing's most versatile multi-species rod, or the Precision Noodle with a tip so sensitive you'll never fish a spring bobber again. And the Commander, the rod that's never met a big fish it couldn't best. Tuned up custom rods. Ice rods handcrafted for you and the way you fish. Here comes one. Got him. Yeah. I'm off to a good start over here, Mr. Coots. I hear that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're not huge, man, but they are going to be delicious. <laughs> I've never fished this spoon color before, and I don't know why. Let that one go. I know that sun's awfully bright. I think I might have to put my shades on. Feels good. There he is. Boom. I think his buddy talked him into it. <laughs> when it was just one, he wouldn't hit it. And as soon as his buddy showed up, then he went and did something silly. Oh, yeah. Unlike Mr. Kuntz, who's far kinder and gentler than I today, I'm going <laughs> to keep fish. He's going to join his buddies. I'm well on the way, Dave. Well, we'll just have an eat over at your house then. <laughs> That's the best way to uh, have a fish fry, do it at somebody else's <laughs> house. There we go, there we go. Nice little guy. There's fish. Little guys. <laughs> nice. You got one going there too, James? Yeah, he's definitely on the uh, short end of the spectrum there. <laughs> oh, he pushed it up. He did. Must be a little slow this morning, Dave. Yeah? The weight of my spoon disappeared and I did one of these. That's weird. Like that? <laughs> hey, there's something wrong with your rod too. <laughs> oh, that's what happened. Look at that. Oh, nice it's a cool little walleye. You got a walleye? Yeah. Oh, uh, wow, that's uh, like a third of a walleye, Dave. <laughs> I think I'd be generous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a decent crappie. I have no interest in keeping and eating a crappie when there's nice perch around, but that's a, a nice little addition there. Now that one hit that uh, glow goldfish spoon again. Orange on the back, gold on the front. And like I said, I'm not really interested in keeping a crappie when there's nice perch around to be eaten, so back he goes. 
Well, that was the classic crappy up hit, Dave. Yeah. You know, where it's just like, where's, what's going on? <laughs> yep. That was a decent crappy. That was all, you know, 12 inch fish. Right. Get those gloves back on. Oh, I know, it's Unlike nippy. before Christmas, where you could basically run around out here in flip flops and a t-shirt. <laughs> you actually need your winter gear now. In the lake we're on today, we're on Lake Ponset. Uh, since ice up, it's just been on fire uh, for producing perch like this, up to, like I said, about 12, 13 inch range. Uh, you're not gonna get a 15 inch monster out here, most likely, but there's also a lot of big crappies in this lake. It's not a lake you're gonna come to and catch 50 of them, uh, but what we've uh, heard through the grapevine is the size of the crappies out here on the top end is really extraordinary. It's not uncommon to catch a 15 plus inch crappie out here. And then there's a good mix of eating size walleyes that guys will catch out here during the course of a day. Uh, fish in that 15 to 19 inch range. So it's a really diverse fishery. And uh, the average quality of the fish is really pretty fantastic. Probably not a trophy lake, but it's one of those lakes that's gonna produce a lot of action on some really nice sized fish. So it really didn't have much going in that last hole. So, you know, perch, you get in these bodies of water and they really move around a lot. So you really, really pays to get back on the school. And if you had fish and they're gone, good to be mobile, good to get your, uh, your holes in, in line and just go hole hopping and, and look for them. Stay on that school. I'm off the school. I'm off the crab. I'm going to move, Coons. I'm going to catch this fish first. There we go. That's some shoulders to it. Did you get a good one? Yeah. Tied into something good here. Oh, oh, oh! There's a nice tubby. What'd you get, Coons? Not too huge, but I'll tell you bad. what, after catching those little two inch uh, walleyes, this one felt pretty good. Yeah, what he came for. Caught him on a nice uh, flash champ. What was it? UV green. I'll let you grow up and I'll catch you again. That uh, was almost a lost <clears> fish. <throat> <laughs> Have you tried the red spikes at all, James? Oh, there we go. Nice. Oh yeah, big crappie. Nice. Did he come off the bottom too? Yeah, that ain't a bad crappie. Nice. That's my second one like that. Yeah. You know, he's not one of those 15 inch giants, but that's all uh, 12, 12 and a half, I bet. Yep. Now, was he roaming around there down with the perch? Uh, he was. He come up just like some of those nicer perch have been doing. But uh, this is the first time this year that I've had to say this. So I'm gonna get that fish back quick before his uh, fins start to freeze up. There's another one. There you go, Coons. <laughs> Got a nice little run going here. No kidding. Whoop. Another little Toby. What'd you get? Now I got a measure on him. He's eight, nine, ten and a half inches, almost 11 inches long. That's a good eating perch. Yep. If I was to eat perch, which I'd love to, but I don't really want to clean any fish, I'm gonna let that guy go. Get down and get another one. No matter what moves you, Seafoam works. At Markham, we know being the leader in ice sonar performance doesn't mean we get to rest on our laurels. Introducing the new iSeries line of flashers. Every model in our new iSeries line combines a bright and vivid display with Markham's advanced sonar technology to produce flasher sonar units that offer a larger display and increased viewing angles without compromising Markham's legendary sonar performance. This winter, don't settle for anything less than an iSeries flasher from Markham, the most powerful high-performance flasher sonar units ever built. VMC's dominating line of panfish baits just got even better. With the introduction of new baits molded from high-density tungsten, the Miracle Metal that offers the same weight as traditional lead at half the size. The platoon of new baits include the Tungsten Fly, fast-sinking VMC Nymph and Waxtail soft baits pre-rigged on VMC tungsten jigs, and the innovative tungsten chandelier jig that targets roaming panfish like a fish-seeking missile. The next time you hit the ice, tie on a tungsten, and you'll be fishing fast and taking names with VMC. 
From the first time you pick up a tuned up custom rod, you'll know you're holding something special. A rod not mass produced, but built one at a time by the hands of gifted craftsmen. Rods like the Precision, ice fishing's most versatile multi-species rod, or the Precision Noodle with a tip so sensitive you'll never fish a spring bobber again. And the Commander, the rod that's never met a big fish it couldn't best. Tuned up custom rods, ice rods handcrafted for you and the way you fish. No matter what moves you, Seafoam works. The wind's blowing so hard, the light bite, I'd never tell. Right. Yeah, you're not trying to jig, you're just trying to hold still, let the wind do the work. There, there he is. There he goes. All right, David. That's a nicer fish. I'm gonna say that's a big perch. I'd love that. Oh. Yes. Get him, Dave. Get him. Oh. There you go. Yeah. Look at that. That's a chunker. Woohoo. That'll knock some rust right off. That'll break uh, that 10 inch mark for sure that I've been hitting. And you know, I didn't want to be right, and I still don't want to be right about these fish getting a little bit uh, less aggressive because of the change in weather, but you did just put that jig on it. Yeah. You did just ice one of the nicest perch of the day. First, I mean, not even two minutes down in there. That's 12 inches. Got him. Feels like a good one. Good job. I got another one down there. Woo. I might have stuck another walleye here. Yeah? Which is kind of getting annoying. <laughs> there it is. Uh, yeah, no doubt. <laughs> another walleye. A pretty decent little guy there. Yeah. All right, I take it back. It's not annoying. <laughs> What we got going on here is, you know, Dave and I have had a pretty cool morning. Lots of nice crappies, lots of nice perch, but the South Dakota wind is starting to kick up. You can kind of see us bundling up a little bit more, hiding behind the snowmobiles a little bit. I think what we're gonna do, if it picks up any more, Dave, let's set up that house and get inside. I mean, this is where we need to be. We yep. might as well do it in comfort. That sounds good. Still getting them on that glow goldfish. That's a little bit smaller spoon than I'd normally use for walleyes but he didn't mind. That's been such a good producer for me. I mean, it's pretty rare where I come out, put on a bait, and just stick with it, fish it the whole morning. We're, we're not all the way through the day yet. I could change yet, but that bait has just been good for me from start to finish so far. These little tiny little spoons don't have the biggest hooks, but man, they're just like little pins, little needles. Get them in there, they're not going anywhere. Great fish, I wouldn't mind catching a bunch more like that, but we're gonna let him go. All right, see you later, walleye. There he goes. I'll tell you what, Mr. Koontz, you don't want to get your hands warm or wet when you're out here in this wind. <laughs> Hurts a little bit. <laughs> he was worth it. Well, I know your hands are wet now after catching that fish. You want to throw up that hub and get some heat on him? I think that'd be a great idea. <laughs> let's not even move it. Let's just drop it right in the middle of where we're fishing here and uh, let's get inside. Let's do it. All right. Well, you know, I'm always torn. Um, you give up the mobility when you're out there on the sleds. You can just, you know, pull the sled ahead, punch a new hole, sit down. But man, it was getting miserable. <laughs> so we'll trade the little mobility for a whole lot of comfort. This is nice. Very nice and comfortable. Got it. Oh, I earned that fish times about 6,000. Like mm, pretty good too. Yeah. Nice. Hello, Mr. Perchy. Sweet. I tell you what, a nine inch perch should not require that much messing around. <laughs> they should come in and pound it. <laughs> well, he definitely liked the looks of it. This guy gets a free pass. We've kind of piled up enough perch where, you know, I don't want the great big ones. Right. But if we can get some more in that 11 inch range, those will be the ones we keep. Okay. Bye, fish. All right. I will be immediately going to stock up on a few more of those. Yeah, I would too. Come on. Come on. Looks like a decent fish. He bumped it, bumped it up. Bumped it again. There's oh, two yeah, of them. I saw that. Yep. It's got to be getting called in by There he is. Yeah. <laughs> Coons, I'm going to make you put that spoon yeah, on. Yeah, I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to have to grab a different rod. Uh, decent perch. Yep. That nice. one's coming home with us. Yes, nice. But well, this is a great time to kind of talk about uh, how we're 
rigged up here today as far as rods and reels are concerned. Uh, I'm fishing a 32 inch bull whip. This is a uh, tuned up custom rod. Really have fallen in love with it since it came out two years ago. And uh, it looks very similar to a precision noodle. It's got that uh, real soft tip out on the end, high visibility, it allows you to see bites. But how it's different uh, from the precision noodle is it's got a little bit more backbone. And what that allows me to do is fish larger lures where the precision noodle, which is a great rod for just panfish, uh, where that uh, uh, precision noodle allows me to fish like tungsten jigs or plastics, a jig with Euro larva for bluegills or crappies. What the bull whip does is it's a lot more versatile because I'm able to fish uh, this one twelfth of an ounce a tumbler spoon or a very large tungsten jig, or I'll even fish rip and wraps on this rod. And you've seen what we've caught here today. It's been kind of like across the entire gamut, the smorgasbord. Uh, walleyes, perch, crappies, and a smallmouth bass. Uh, and it's got enough backbone to handle those species. So I consider this one of my favorite rods because of how versatile it is. If you're on a bite where you're targeting real finicky bluegills or crappies, that precision noodle definitely gets the nod. But here today, where we're kind of targeting a wide variety of species and we're using slightly larger lures, the bullwhip is the way to go. Get him. There we go. Oh, some goods. You're on fire. It's, it's that jig. That was the best dollar of snowmobile fuel ever used. Yes. He's not huge, but he is action. It feels and good. And I like action. I come to ice fish. I have to get jiggy with it. <laughs> Bloop. Love it. This winter, set a trap for your next trophy with iFish Pro. Ideal for all species, iFish Pro is an innovative fishing system that allows an angler to use their favorite rod and reel instead of trying to manage the fish hand over hand. Oh, right Complete your ice fishing arsenal with iFish Pro, tactical ice gear that puts the fight back into tip up fishing. Look at that. Find iFish Pro online at iFishPro.com or at your favorite sporting goods retailer. Everything you'd expect from a premium quality fish house and so much more. Glacier combines superior craftsmanship and premium quality materials to produce a comfortable and enjoyable mobile base camp for your next outdoor adventure. Available in a variety of models, a Glacier Ice House offers more standard features, more usable space, and a better fit and finish than the competition. Visit our website at GlacierIceHouse.com to find a dealer near you and see why a Glacier Fish House is the ultimate way to play. Nearly 70 years ago, a simple idea was taking form in the heart of the ice belt. That idea was, if you combined a commitment to quality with a passion for the sport of ice fishing, you could build a better ice auger. From that idea, StrikeMaster was born. Forever committed to innovation in the quest to build a lighter, more durable auger. StrikeMaster, powerful, durable, reliable. Come on, I'm just not aggressive. Man, I tell you what, this high pressure system has been really, really hard on these fish. You know, we've been downsizing these baits, trying to get them to take it. And uh, I actually got one working here right now. He's still there, nice return. Come on, there, there we go. Watch, they're just hard, they're just hard to catch. They're so finicky, they'll come up. I've had this one here come up two, three times to the bait. And uh, he finally took it. He's not huge any, by any means. I'd say maybe nine, 10 inches long. But you can see these little flash champs. They're the babiest of baby flash champs. So being it's cold and windy, we want him to live. We're gonna let him go. That's all right, I like it. We'll get some more of those. Break the ice, there we go. Okay, there's another one. Boy, I tell you, these things have been coming in so delicate, so soft. You just gotta ever so slowly, no fast movement of the jig. You just ever so slowly let him ha have it, let him try to take it, tease him, 
tease him and nailed him just like that nice oh hi baby <laughs> that. Not, not big not huge again but definitely maybe this last hour of sunlight will get these guys and girls a little more active dial them up catch some big ones caught him right on the side of the face there again that flash champ again we're gonna let him go go again What do we have here? Get him, James. Get I'm trying. Him. This is a work in progress over here. I think this might be the uh, the googly-eyed kind. Sheephead? <laughs> the other googly-eyed <laughs> kind. <laughs> the wall-eyed kind. Ah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Not a bad way to end the day. That is very nice. What do we have here? Oh yeah. All right. Not a giant by any means. Just stole quite myself. Ah. Oh yeah. Told you there were some in here. Very nice, James. Yeah. Well, we had some walleyes earlier, but they were they were <laughs> wee runs. Yeah. That's getting to be respectable almost. I'm gonna have to go in and uh, go play fetch with this one because. Get her down deep. Yep. Nice. You get those fish this time of day. They get so aggressive. We should be able to be okay. He took a nice swing and miss at it one time and come back and did it again. There we go. That fish will be all right. Yeah, yeah. Back he goes. He put up a nice little tussle, huh? That was a heck of a day. That's a lot of fish oh to plow through. Oh my gosh, yeah. A ton of fun. Yeah. Nice nice crappies. One decent walleye, some small yep. ones to go with it, but it's just a mess of perch. Oh yeah. It was a blast. First time out on the ice for this fella. I am I am pumped. I'm, I'm looking forward to doing it again. Well, good, because I've got you for the rest of the week. Yes, you do. Yes, we do. <laughs> well, we got some uh, rust knocked off this guy, and uh, basically what Dave and I do every year is we get together for a week. At the start of that week, we'll shoot a TV show, and then we just go do what fishing buddies do, and we just kind of travel around and go catch a whole bunch of fish. Yeah. This week, it'll be uh, final destination. We'll be at the uh, IDEO get-together on uh, Leech Lake. So Looking forward to that, too. If nothing else, we should have lots of good fish stories to share once we get there. From Dave Kuntz and I, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. That was fun, man. Thank right. you. Let's keep fishing. All right. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at Indepth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.